So the first thing you're going to need is to make a, a little, uh, I guess, a cone of clay. You want it to be nice and round, so spend some time. You don't want too many wrinkles in it, like these folds. It's kind of good to get rid of all those because those will potentially cause problems later. Nice and smooth here. So you got yourself a little cone of clay. It's fairly symmetrical. Um, and then you're going to want to go in with a tool, a wooden dowel. Open that up. And you're going to want to stop. You're kind of centering it and turning it to make sure you go right down the middle. You're going to want to stop before you hit uh, the very end, of course, because you're going to need this part to make the body and this part to make the mouthpiece. So if you, if you work up a, a series of different size dowels to get it open, um, that's kind of helpful. So one of the ways to finish um, a piece like this would be to get in there with your finger and do what's called a pinch pot technique. So you're starting at the bottom here, keeping this end collared in, and then just kind of working around, feeling for the thick and thin spots. <clears throat> Another way to do it is by inserting a bigger wooden dowel and kind of rolling it like this. And that'll expand out the interior chamber. So there's that. So that mark isn't exactly where I want it to be, but this is a good time to reach in there and kind of feel for where that back wall is. If I was to poke down in here now, it would, um, that stick or that fettling knife would show up right down in there. You see that? So <clears throat> that just kind of gives you a mark I'm going to fill that back in though, but I want to mark that spot. I don't want to hold there right now. I want to mark that. So, and after you've even rolled it out like that, it's worth going back, doing a little bit more wall thinning. You're looking for, uh, you're looking for something that's approximately, um, I would say three eighths of an inch, which is a little less than a quarter of an inch. So collar, keep that end collared in. Go back in there, kind of th keep thinning. You don't want to have to really get it super thin at this point, although down the road you, you can do that. So once you get to this point, <clears throat> there's a couple different ways to finish it. You can either continue to collar it in or just take a little ball of clay or a cookie of clay, a little moisture on that. So here we are about four hours later. The clay has stiffened quite a bit. Um, it's what I would consider as a kind of soft leather hard, but a nice kind of consistency for doing the next steps. Let me just show you a couple things here. At this point, I uh, like to add on uh, <clears throat> a spot for the a lanyard or a cord to be attached. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Now that the clay is stiffened a little bit, it's a much better time to do this, otherwise it would want to be collapsing and you couldn't do as much smoothing as you would want to when the clay is much softer. So I'm just going to add that in. and use this tool, which I use quite a bit, to punch holes. This doesn't work so well for making these holes because you end up with a little wad of clay in the interior, but for something like this where you can support it from the back, you press through, press, this is called telescoping tubing, and it, it 
takes that little wedge of clay out, pull that back through like that and it makes a really nice little hole there. So um, we're going to go ahead and find, we, you know, we've marked our spot for where we're going to make the window for the uh, voicing. Um, <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and do that. I think for this particular one, because it's so small, I'm just going to go ahead and poke in there, pull back this way. This uh, airway stick is about a quarter of an inch, and that's what I'm estimating the approximate dimensions of this particular size of an oak, oak arena is going to need to be. At this point, you could uh, go in with your other tools, remove some of that excess, which you know is going to be excess clay. Again, I, I know how approximately how big this is going to need to be, but when you're first starting out, it might be worth <clears throat> making that particular step an even smaller window. So there we've got the uh, window opened up a little bit. Um, next step would be to find to position your airway. So what I like to do there is start by kind of creating the spot that that's going to end up being where the mouthpiece is going to end up being and kind of opening it up a little bit. This will prevent this area from cracking so much when you go in. And I talked about using, instead of going right in with your uh, airway stick, to use more of a probing tool. So I'm kind of looking for the side. Where I'm aiming for is about right there. Hopefully you can see that. So I'm just going to poke through with this. The advantage of this is if you miss the first time, you've got another try. So that, that's pretty good. It's a little bit on the high side, but acceptable. But if you poked through and you noticed you were way down below, you could go back, poke through again, kind of find that spot, wiggle it a little bit. That gets it started. And then when you go through with your wooden stick, it's got kind of a general um, place that we know we want it to be. So that's just getting that stick through there. And then I'm going to go ahead <clears throat> and compress this back wall here a little bit. Push that stick back through. It's going to create a little burr there. I'll go ahead and trim that down just to kind of get that airway that that airway exit you know started you don't want to get that too wide right away so now like I've, I mentioned that if I look through here and I can find the spot against this back wall here right there that I know I, I want the labium lip to end up there. I can kind of look on the sides here and um, see approximately, you know, where that air is going to be shooting. So I'm going to go in there with a needle tool at this point and remove what I know is some excess clay underneath that spot. So there's where the labium lip's going to be. Clean out this clay over here. So if you do it real precise the first time, you won't have to be, um, you know, having to make it a lot of, uh, um, you know, correcting your mistakes if you try to get it right, pretty right the first time. So if I push that airway stick back through, we can see that that is kind of lining up with where we think the airway or the labian lip is going to end up being. So at that point, <clears throat> I've got those sides cleaned out. This is looking pretty good down in here. That wall is leaning out this way a little bit, so I'm going to go in and push that back to make sure we get that good drop in there. 
every time you poke through with the airway stick like this, it's kind of good once that little burr is created in there um, to go ahead and trim that. Just a little bit of clay out of there. This clay is still a little bit on the soft side, but I'll tell you how to deal with that in a minute. So I'm looking through here now and I'm seeing the lip, this line here, um, lining up in the window, but it's a little bit on the high side, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to go ahead and cut the ramp. So I'm going to come down like this on this side, like this on this side, angle over to meet where I know that lip needs to be. Pull that out, come back this way, pull that out. And that just gives you a nice start on that lip in there. So I'm looking through there again. The window's about, or the labium lip's about where I uh, thought it was. Again, make sure your tools are nice and clean when you're doing this. Um, I'm just going to press down a little bit here. Look through there again. It's a little high on this side, so I'm just going to press that down. At this point, I like to go underneath a little bit just to compress that clay. Work over here a little bit. Work over here a little bit. So what I'm seeing in there now, I'm going to give it a little push right here just to bring that lip down a little bit more. I've noticed that the airway here, right in here, has collapsed a little bit of the airway exit. So I'm going to give that a push back through. Lift that, open that up just a little bit more. Again, we're dealing with those very tight tolerances of uh, three one hundredths of an inch. So that's looking like there's a little bit of a, about a three, a little bit more than a three one hundredths of an inch uh, airway opening there. And the, the labium lip is lining up good. It's gotten a little bit messy looking, so I'm going to straighten that out. So I'm looking through there and it's all looking pretty good. I'm estimating that this is going to have a very nice soft uh, uh, volume right now, but I'm going to go ahead and blow in it. So I'm blowing hard enough to blow that note away. So actually it has a pretty good medium volume. So that's, I'm liking that. <clears throat> um, one of the things I wanted to mention that at this point that clay I would consider is still quite soft. So I'm going to take a what's a paint stripper. You could use a, um, a hair dryer and simply hit this whole thing with some hot air. And what that's going to do is stiffen that whole area quite rapidly. You'll actually see that it starts to show uh, the moisture coming out here in a second. Because I know that lip is kind of really where I want it, but it needs just a little bit more refining. I'm going to, you can see here the moisture is coming out of it, and that's okay. So I'm going to hit it with about that much air. And that'll just give that a second. It'll uh, kind of regain its moisture. A little bit but that has stiffened this whole area quite a bit. The alternative to that of course is a spray gun. If things were too stiff in there you really don't want to let them get too stiff. Clay can only absorb, reabsorb so much water. Uh, you can do a little bit of spraying but then you're gonna have to kind of let it sit for a second so it's better to work up to the stiffness of the clay as opposed to um, letting it get too um, hard right away. So try to do things as soft as you can for whatever you're trying to do to it. So I'm just going to go back in and do a little bit more refining here. Clean this up a little bit. And we'll throw this ocarina on a tuner. See what kind of key it wants to be in. Because this isn't a controlled chamber size, it's going to end up in whatever key it wants to be in. I'm going to put this, now that that's dried in there a little bit, I'm going to put the uh, airway stick back through. Kind of make sure that there's no crumbs or anything in there. 
um, check recheck that lip needs to go down just a little bit at that point at this point <clears throat> it might be easier to instead of pushing it down because the clay is pretty stiff at this point I'm going to go ahead and just trim that down a little bit and that brought that down to kind of where I wanted you can also push down like this so it's lining up quite nicely now so we're getting a nice sound out of there I'm going to turn the tuner on blow your low note and amazingly enough it's C so um, the next step would be to p figure out where you're going to put your four holes one you don't want to get this one too close to the voicing because it'll affect the sound I'll talk a little bit more about some of those stumbling blocks later on about things you don't want to do so that just kind of shows you where you're going to put your holes uh, putting this first hole in here you could use one of these what's going to end up happening is that little wad of clay is likely to end up on the inside of the oak arena but I'm going to go ahead and use that and see if I can poke that hole well, see I got lucky that time it came on the outside instead of on the inside so that's probably a little bit bigger than what we're going to need to get it to go up to D so I'm going to close that down a little bit just reposition it low it's a pretty good D and then we're gonna go up to the next hole this is probably too big so why don't we do this we'll start it with this, this uh, the same one I used before open it up a little bit pull that out and then I'm gonna go in with this again and at this point I can uh, use this to re-round that hole up so we're going to try C, D, E, F. So that's E now, so that's still a little bit flat. So instead of making this hole bigger, I'm going to go ahead and carve underneath. So there's two different ways to get the pitch to go up. I'm letting those crumbs go down on the inside now because we'll take those out later. I'm just beveling underneath. Instead of... Uh, so there's two different ways to make the whole the note go up. It's either to make the hole bigger or bevel underneath. To do this tuning, I'm doing it now, but because this clay is still pretty soft, I probably would normally wait a little longer to do this. It makes it easier to carve those holes out. So let's try it now. C, D, E, F, that's better. So here I've gone ahead and um, done the final tuning on this particular ocarina. Uh, one of the things I wanted to point out is as I play it, um, your breath has a lot of moisture in it. So that's going to uh, really add a lot of moisture to this airway. So particularly if the clay started out fairly soft, which this was, this windway, airway, airway exit, and labium edge are going to pick up a lot of moisture. So, it's worth going back in there and hitting that with some more dry air to make sure this doesn't all turn into mud on you. Um, <clears throat> I did a fair amount of beveling underneath here to make sure those holes didn't get too big. Um, my assessment of this window is that it's actually a little bit on the large size for this particular oak arena. Um, it's, it's a little bit more than uh, probably that, uh, you know, that th uh, 0.38 inches, uh, hundredths of an inch that uh, we talked about earlier in the other videos. It, it still plays good. A nice C there. Um, this this one probably could tolerate a hole in the bottom. Um, it's going to be fairly loud on that high note because again the 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 distance from the airway to this um, labium lip for the size of an oak arena. Now this one's playing in the key of C now, but when this one's done being fired, it's going to probably be closer to D. So. Um, the chamber size is a little bit small to be a, a true C when it's fired. 
So that's why this area here, this uh, the labium, the distance from the airway to the labium lip is probably a little bit too big on this. But for starters, this would be a wonderful uh, you know, a wonderful successful ocarina. So I think that's about it for this video. Uh, the next one you're going to see is uh, how to make this similar uh, type of ocarina using a slab technique. Thanks for watching. Bye.